right, we are live with our guest, um, Mr. Chris Fujigami, Big Island's ukulele virtuoso. Thanks for joining, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, um, it's been a crazy year. I mean, the last time I saw you, I believe it was China, Music China. No, it was NAM. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, NAM. Right before NAM. everything went down. Right. I just, and did you have anything like planned for the year? Yeah, we had the uh, Denver Ukulele Festival coming up. And then um, we were supposed to hit the studio in the beginning of the year to release the, our new album like um, around October. But then everything went down, everything closed down, and then the album just went right out the window. <laughs> it's, it was just so unfortunate. I just feel like, yeah. I feel like we lost everything in the span of like three days. Yeah, like, I think it was like, it, much, like March 17, 18, 19. And it's just like, <laughs> oh, man. And I can just tell, it's just like, since you were busy too, we were feeling it, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. guessing. Because it's like you, you, you set up your whole plan and it just and it goes throughout the window. So, But things are better now? Yeah, I mean, um, things are in recovery mode now. But then, I mean, you still feel it a little, little bit. But it's it's at that point where you're starting to feel a little bit uh, more on the normal side. Yeah. And I don't know, you're just recovering right now. <laughs> do, you have cabin, do you have island fever? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the worst part. I was, I was like, like when, I come, when I come back from the road, right, I'm just like, okay, it feels like home. I feel great. But then like after like two or three months, I'm like, oh, I like go somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? I know so. what you're talking about. <laughs> because we, and even like, um, we're always looking for excuses to drive to the other side of the island because, like, man, we we just stuck in. The, you see the same scenery every single day, and it's like you need you as a as a human being, you need something uh, like a different change of scenery. Yeah, and our islands aren't the biggest, you know. People on the <laughs> mainland can road trip, you know, they can get into our. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they can go, but no, yeah, we can drive like a couple hours. Okay, we've seen it. Let's do it again next weekend. <laughs> yeah. But it, yeah, I, I, I feel you, man. And it was in, for, in the beginning, it was, it was really tough for me, too. I'm just like, wow, everything just went out the window, like you said. And, yeah, what well, um, was your, you, you had uh, plans for your year already? I wanted to follow my, uh, my album release with a tour. And I'm like, okay, that's not going to happen. Oh, that's right. Your album came out right during that <laughs> yeah, time. Like, I was like, okay, I'm going to plan it before because I was, I was going to go to Memphis. And then oh, okay. I was going to go back to the UK. So... I was like excited and then all of a sudden everything started getting shut down. I'm just like, Oh my gosh. And then, and then I started getting like on top of like losing the gigs and everything. It's just, then the cat, the Island fever set in. I'm just like, Oh my gosh. And I had a lot, there was a while where I had a hard time finding balance. Yeah. You know? So I like, I tried to play ukulele, but I just like, wasn't motivated at the beginning. <laughs> Dang, you know, cause we, we practice. So when we go on the road, like that's like, where we showcase what we practice. Yeah, and you were at the you were like touring often, huh? You were you were going out there a lot and, and then for everything to just shut down and then there was nothing. Unfortunately, yeah. So like I was talking to some of the other ukulele players, I'm like, oh, how are you holding off? And then you know, yeah, but now we have a there's kind of like an online presence for ukulele festivals and stuff. So that's yeah, kind of yeah. it's a supplement. It's just not the same, you know. I wanna get <laughs> off and go, you know, I wanna I wanna see some new sites, but yeah, hopefully next year, man. Hopefully. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we were we were hoping that Nam was gonna come back, but as soon as we got that email, I was so bummed. But I mean, it's for the best. Yeah, we just gotta stay put until it's safe because it's not worth it. You get out, you get sick, you know. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully next year. But yeah, I've 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 known uh, Chris Fujigami for man, it's been about been about ten years now. Yeah, when was the when was the first time we? I mean, what year was the first time we met in Maui? um it was actually wow 10 years ago exactly but i remember you used to come like you used to come pretty often huh yeah because um uh jake would have his uh jake shimbukuro would have his um j club meetings i'm not sure if he still has that going on oh anymore. yeah yeah. i, I think I, I went to one you was at <laughs> yeah so that's we would go there i think he would be there yearly so it was like a yearly trip we would go to maui and it was just a great time and then one of the years that we went that, that's when i finally met you yeah, and, yeah. And then it's yeah. funny because I was like, oh, that's Chris Fujigami. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, for, there was one time, um, I think it was the concert night, you came up to me and you were like, oh, I watch your videos and this and that. I was like, 
who is this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> like I remember, like I just, I just saw your Orange World, your Crazy G. Because I mean, like back in the day, I mean, there was what there was all Dream playing, and you know, yeah, YouTube yeah. was just coming out. So, with ukulele, like, like the ukulele community is very small. So, like you know, yeah, of course, definitely. when you're posting, like you're shredding on Jake's like Grandma's group and stuff. I'm like, <laughs> oh man, this this, and then you came up with an album, and I was like, wow, that's you know that that's incredible. But yeah, that was. That's that's how we met ten years ago. I'll definitely try to show a picture of it because it's a great picture. But um, I mean, every ever since we met back then was like we would see each other more and more often. Yeah, and it yeah. was cool because it's like every every single time we saw each other, like our both of our ukulele skills were like rising with our age, and and then it, and then it came to the point where we were we were actually able to improvise and jam together. And <laughs> and today, well, we we just like we go to Nam show and just play around and. Oh, it's just a it's just a great time every time. It's it's cool to see the just the evolution and yeah, just like since since then. And I remember I was like, oh, I'm coming with an album, and maybe four years later it came out. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And well, I mean, the thing is, I I went into the studio and it just it just wasn't it just I I don't think I was just ready. So I was like, okay, bro, sorry, it's not coming out yet. <laughs> the first your first album was um was half half like covers and originals. Um, I think it was like or more so original. I should know this. So I think it was more originals. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't. It's funny. I don't play those songs anymore. But um, yeah, it's. I did. I think about four covers, like that. But I remember. I remember. I bought your first album when it came out. Uh, no turning back. <laughs> oh, and okay. that's a collector's item, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, that one we only printed three hundred copies, and it was more so like a trial run. Like it was more so on like the the demo level, and mm. so after the three hundred copies. I mean, I don't even have a copy. So if you have one, oh man, I, you, you gotta sign mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I have it out there. But yeah, that was. I remember. I was like, wow, yeah, this is this is a good. This is a cool album. So uh, yeah, before we get into kind of like the style change, just uh, tell me a little bit more about like I guess the origins of like how it all began. I know you always talk about that Walmart ukulele. Yeah. So I started playing uh, when I was thirteen years old, and actually. Um, before that, like I was, I was just talking about this with uh, Brian and Herb guys uh, this past Monday. But um, before I started playing ukulele, I didn't care for music like at all. Like my brother would, um, he's five years older than me. He'd be getting ready for school, and he would he would have his radio on, and I would just cover my ears because I didn't want to hear the music. And so it, it was kind of weird that when I was 13 years old, um, my mom left for for Japan. She's um, native to Japan, so she went there for the summer. And I was just at home um, pretty much by myself, uh, just with my dad. And then I went in the closet and there was a beat up old Walmart ukulele in there. And so I started plucking away. And um, it's kind of weird because I, I remember my, my teacher talking about Jake Shimbukuro, my uh, music teacher. And so I was like, oh, should search him up. So I went on the internet and at, at that time there's no YouTube. And so I went on his official website. I think he was playing like, he was playing Misty and something else but the second song was like a rock song i was like man this is crazy i've never seen the ukulele ever do something like this and so i was like man, i gotta i gotta buy his album so we went to buy his album and um i heard uh what was the song uh toastmaker's revenge for the first oh, time i was i was just gonna say <laughs> <laughs> so i was like man this is nuts and and at the time i didn't know the distortion part was also the ukulele but i didn't know that at the time and so I started plucking away and trying to figure out. Um, and to my surprise, I could kind of maneuver around the song and, and sound out um, the chords that he was playing, even though this is the first time I'm playing the ukulele. And um, because the ukulele came on the easier side for me, my head became huge. And I was like, I'm the baddest ukulele player on the planet. And I was just walking around like, man, I got to keep honing my skills so that um, I can just show off my skills to the world i mean i'm probably gonna go famous in a few years so i gotta get ready for this <laughs> but yeah, yeah there's more to the story but we can touch on that later <laughs> sounds good sounds good i need to agree it's like you know once you get momentum it's something you're good at i think it's bound to go to a little bit yeah yeah definitely Man, especially yeah, when you're young like that yeah yeah ch- you, you get channel your inner mcgregor dude <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah toastmaker's revenge me too i was like Wow, and I heard. I think my, my the one I heard mine was in a no. I heard my heart will go on in a bookstore, and we bought the CD that night. And um, 
Yeah, I was just I was just blown away. But I, did I ever tell you the story of like when my dad first told me about Jay? No, you never did. He was like, we were just driving and I was playing like Call Crater Boys, you know, um, like Tropical Hawaiian Day. And um, he just said, uh, one day, he said, oh, you, you ever heard Jason Curl? I was like, oh, who's that guy? And then for me, like, I just automatically assumed there's some guy living in Japan. Like, um, <laughs> I, like, like I, I picture like an 80 year old guy, right? Sits in a chair <laughs> and just plays like slow Hawaiian, maybe a little bit of jazz music. Yeah, yeah. And so I really never, I didn't even know what he looked like. And he, and then for Christmas, um, or shortly after that, he um, bought me the Play Loud Ukulele DVD. Oh, okay. And then he, and he no, he is not an eight-year-old guy. It's a, it's a young 20, 27. Oh my gosh, he was younger than us now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but and I, like seeing those those backflips he was doing, I was like, like wow. And I was just like, wow, I, I really want to do that one. <laughs> well, not the backflips, but. Just it was <laughs> yeah. so, and then from then I was just like, I gotta buy all his CDs, and I think it was just like, like how, for you, it was just like a nonstop. I want to learn all these songs because it's just it's yeah. so cool, and no one else is really doing it. Because I mean, like out of your peers, right? Were there more who wanted to learn this kind of style, or was it just you? No, it's just me. Yeah, yeah. There was, there was a couple others, but I just yeah, and I was like, I don't care if it's hard. I want to learn Spain. I want to learn um, uh, what was that one off? Walking down Rain Hill, Toast, Toast make, uh, Toastman's Wave, stuff like that. Okay, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was just, that, was, that was probably my, one of my favorite albums. What about you? Uh, my favorite one is, of uh, the favorite two was Walking Down Rain Hill and then Dragon. Because the Dragon one was like full on live. Yeah, that had the, like the order stream, and right? And, oh, third stream, yeah. I remember you used to play that one too. <laughs> oh, man. But you know, I was, I was thinking the other day because you said the, the Play Loud Ukulele DVD, yeah? yeah. And um, you, you think about like the time that that was released was probably around 2003 or somewhere around there. And fast forward 17 years, if you put Jake at 27 up against the ukulele players that have already touched on everything that he's doing uh, back then, Jake is still the dominant force. Like, oh, yeah. His no. skills from... Uh, 17 years ago is still pretty untouchable <laughs> yeah no I, I, jake i think jake will always be the goat i think because he just yeah. he's always and that's something that's always impressed me with him and i strive to do it it's just he's always evolving you know you don't yeah. know what he's gonna do and it's just like i'm just like dude like how <laughs> you <know? laughs> like I, you know whenever i see him i was like man like the last record was good and then the next one is even better and it's just yeah it, it's, it's really cool yeah and it's just and it's, he sounds completely different as he did 17 years ago yeah, every single album he reinvents himself. Yeah, and it's just it's just, it's just so so cool to see. And of course, he's the nicest guy ever. <laughs> and did he like how was like I'm guessing like it was kind of similar where he start to remember who you were too. Uh yeah. So the I think when I was so I started playing when I was 13, and then I met Jake for the first time when I was 14, and we met him at a Borders because I think every single time he uh, released an album, he would do that Borders run mm. and. So we showed up there and then because my mom spoke Japanese, she ended up making friends with uh, his, I, I guess she was like one of his um, workers, but the main worker for his website. And so they needed somebody that was a, a translator that could translate and, and put the, um, I guess, English to Japanese on their website. And so they asked my mom to do it. And through that, we were at Jake's almost all of the stuff that when he would come through Hilo and made friends through that wow that's pretty yeah. cool i didn't know that <laughs> how about you yeah. um well I, I think i just went so often he's like hey andrew <laughs> <You know? laughs> no, no, no. It's, um, i was my dad knew uh, dean taba you know his his bass player oh, okay play with. and um we, we saw him at the westin here on maui he was in a pride event and then um he, my dad was talking to dean and um Dean was then he said something to Jake and they said, Oh, come with us. So we went to the green room with 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 Jake. And I remember I was like, I was star you know, starstruck. I was starstruck for like the first two years. I said every time, even though if I saw him like seven times, I was starstruck every <laughs> yeah. single time. <laughs> but yeah, he I remember he's like, play for me. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what a, you know, you're in front of the guy whose music you play. Yeah. It's just like it can't get worse than that. <laughs> so like I think I was I was I really liked playing me and Shirley T back in the day. And I just yeah. remember I played it for him, and then uh, he, goes, he goes, "Oh man, you know, you know, good job." And then he helped me correct the intro. <laughs> I was thinking it kind of—I I forget—I was doing it wrong, but 
yeah, I just, from that moment, I think that's when he started remembering who I was. And, you know, he, I went on my way out, he gave me a, he gave me one of his strings. Like, oh, thank you, Jake. You know, I was all, you know, <laughs> I was all happy. And then, yeah, so after that, he would recognize who I was. And every time he came to Maui, he, um, you know, we would see him here and there. And then and that's when I saw you, eventually three years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the first time I played with him uh, was actually on Maui at the J Club meeting. Oh, and, wait, 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 was that 2007? I think, um, no, this was 2000, either 2004 or 2005. Oh, okay, okay. I was going to say, because I went to the 2007 meeting and yeah, I think I saw you walking out of the parking lot. But. <laughs> cool. What did you play with him? Um, I th- oh, man, I can't remember. I think I played two songs. The f- I can remember the first one was Let's Dance. And I remember sweating bullets, man. I was making so much mistakes. So like, how am I playing this in front of the, the guy who created it? And I'm probably playing the wrong chords. <laughs> It's okay. It's inevitable. But at least we tried, you know. <laughs> yeah. And you got to give, you know, come on, like back in the day, our work, I feel like it was a lot harder since there was no YouTube, you know. Yeah, you definitely. really had to grind. And is that is that chord right, you know? Because at yeah. the time, I mean, I didn't know any music theory. I don't know about you. Like, did you have any theory? Like, could you No, like, nothing pick at all. Right? It was just like, okay, this chord is it. <laughs> yeah. And you got to keep, I mean, in order to learn the songs, it was keep rewinding, rewind, rewind. The DVDs. Yeah. I mean, the DVDs is pretty much the only thing you had to look at. And even the DVDs is like, there's so many different angles that you can't see his hand anyways. (laughs) So you just got to listen. Oh my gosh. That was, that was so, I missed that. I missed that so much. It was just so fun. And just like, I remember the cross current off of the, um, what is it? What is that DVD? It was the second DVD came out with it. It was a cross current with the dragon tapping. Oh yeah. I know. I know what you're talking about, but it was based based in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just like the, the camera would always go behind the, the neck. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> let's guess. <laughs> and, then me, and then I would be with my friend at school. Like, is this chord right? Yeah. I don't know. So just thinking back, it probably would have been a little easier with music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, definitely. But I can, I can hit a D minor. <laughs> oh, man, that's good times, man. Good times. But um, so I know Jake has been a huge influence. Like, and that's why I feel like um, me and you can relate a, relate a lot since we never really. Did you ever have like a teacher growing up? I had a, a ukulele teacher, but it wasn't like um, teaching theory or basics on the ukulele. It was me showing up to class. He says, what do you want to learn? And then I bring him the Jake CD and something that I can't figure out. And then he would use this CD player that slows it down. Like, oh. And then he would figure it out and he would come back to me with it um, on, a, on a tab. And then I would go practice it and then come home. So it was more so just... Um, getting somebody to transcribe Jake's music. Oh, I see. But uh, yeah, but, but uh, yeah, it was not really like a, really like a teacher. You, I mean, you still yeah, had yeah, to put in the work by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, I think, and I think we actually had this conversation 10 years ago, but I remember I was asking you because I was having a super hard time tr- um, going beyond and finding your style. So that's, I kind of yeah. wanted to ask you about that. Like, how was that journey? Well, yeah, same, same for me. I mean, I remember being in the car when I was like 15 or 16 years old and trying to put together a song and it just would go on and on and on. I mean, my, my um, perception of a song was play a bunch of licks for four minutes and then call it a song and put a slap a title on it and it's all good. But after a while, I was like, man, how am I going to do this? Because every single thing that I'm playing sounds like Jake. And so then... I started, uh, my mom told me to listen to some other ukulele players. So I, I, we bought Herbota Jr. CDs. And after a while of listening to him, I started sounding like him. And it wasn't like I was fusing the two styles together. It was I either could sound like Jake or I could sound like Herbota Jr. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, it's, it, that, that hurdle is so hard. Like, I mean, I think there's maybe thousands of people that can play one more gently weeps, but it's like, where you jump the hurdle. And that's the hardest part. I mean, for me, yeah. like, dude, I think I put, I quit my senior year of high school because I kept, every time I pick up, da 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 da, da Jenny Weeps, yeah. Jen Dragon, it was the same cycle. And I'm just like, wow. And I you really, felt the plateau. I, I felt the plateau and I couldn't get, yeah. I, and I didn't know theory too. So yeah. <laughs> and so it just like, it got to the point where I'm just like, I don't even want to play anymore. So I just remember putting it in the closet. And I literally quit for an entire year because I was so frustrated. Whoa. Yeah, but I think that time away helped because when I picked up my ukulele, I was no longer doing those habits. It was say habits. Yeah. 
and kind of doing, you know, like, I don't know what I was doing, but it was just, yeah, just that hurdle was um, very hard to cross. But I think, was it easier once you started, maybe you came up with your, what was your first song anyway? That I, that I wrote? Yeah, yeah. I don't even remember the title. I mean, it's on that that demo album that we put out. By I, f- oh, I might, oh, I might know the answer. I have to see something into the blue or something like that I forget. Oh, is it that one? Yeah, yeah C Major Seven, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I used to love that track. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like, um, yeah, going back to it, it like it was hard to break away. But the only reason, I mean, the only way I could break away was when I stopped listening to ukulele music, mm-hmm. and I I went more so towards. Um, like everybody knows this, I'm a huge Tupac fan, and um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just started that, listening yeah. to all these different, like Carlos Santana, and and that's when you can really start gaining from the different styles. You're not just mimicking an ukulele anymore. You're listening to um, different music, and um, and then also you start to learn how to compose because now it's just not it's not just a bunch of licks. It's verse, chorus bridge you have all these different parts that you really didn't notice when you were just listening to instrumental music yeah it's it's completely different but um yeah i just it's funny just trying to come up with a song without knowing or just yeah just like you said like licks but i think yeah exploring different kinds of music does help because if you were to write let's say if you only listen to jake or herb and you try to write a song it'd probably sound like a jake song or a herb song (laughs) definitely (laughs) Cool. Well, that's, um, yeah, that, I mean, that's just awesome. You were able to get up, you know, that hurdle because that, yeah. that was probably the, um, one of the toughest times of our ukulele journey. But uh, I have to say, what, or what was the hardest thing you've arranged, the hardest song to this day? Oh, man, I don't know. I think it was like, this was back in 2010, something like that. We got called to do the Reno Ukulele Festival. And so... I wanted to find a song that I could just showcase solo and, and just like a mind, mind boggling fast song. And so um, I listened to Tommy Emmanuel's classical gas. I think that was like the hardest thing for me because I wasn't really um, like, I didn't fully find my style yet, but then I was trying to arrange something that was not a copy of Jake. And so, yeah, I think that was the hardest time for me. Now, nowadays it's like, you have the, the knowledge to back up what you're doing. So you listen to something, you're able to arrange it at a faster pace. But back then it was like, you're oh, yeah. slugging it to the end. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, hey, that's, that's good work, man. That's not, a, that's not an easy song to play. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it definitely, it definitely gets a little easier once there's more experience. And there's, of How course, about you, though? The hardest arrangement. <clears throat> it's either had... Up until recently, it was Dream On. Okay. Because just, I mean, F minor, the, the voicings are just not yeah, ukulele like, yeah, friendly, yeah. you know. The melody, yeah, the melody just, um, yeah, got those long stretches. But as of now, I have to say, Your Body is a Wonderland by John Mayer. Oh, the one, that's the one you recently posted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It took me two months. And that's like, cause, and what I did, I just, I took out the lyrics, you know, there's this, there's just this, you know, what is it, F, um, C, B flat, just going throughout the entire song yeah, and having yeah. to, cause I, I could, I was like at the beginning, I was like, yeah, let me just loop it. But then I was like, nah, I gotta <laughs> do something else. I want to do it yeah, like, yeah. in case, you know, my looper goes down or anything. So man, just like getting the rhythm and everything, that was definitely the most difficult piece. Yeah. And I mean, I think some, this is something that um, we don't talk about too much, but playing something like on your own is one thing, but once you're in front of a crowd, it's like, you got to develop how to do that too. Yeah. Because even though I can play it now, I don't, I don't know how it's going to go if, I, if I'm like in a <laughs> concert, right? Because you like the nerves, like you said, especially if you, don't, if you haven't had experience practicing in front of a live audience. Yeah, that's definitely true. Because you like, especially when you're bringing, you're bringing out a new song and you, you, go in, you go in front of an audience and you're playing it for the first time, it, it rarely ever goes as planned. <laughs> and it's like, you've got to practice it like, at smaller venues so that when you get to the big venue it's solid yeah by far and it's just it's a, it's a lot of pressure i mean i think <laughs> I, I think i did one at nam and everybody's there everybody's at nam <laughs> yeah. you know you got uncle benny sitting in the front like oh my gosh you know <laughs> <laughs> and it's just say like, you know you got you got her brian you know clay is there you're there everyone's there it's like oh is it 
the good time to bust this out. You don't want to like, mess <laughs> up in front of all the, you know, the elite guys. Yeah, so it's definitely, yeah, yeah. Just playing in front of just people in general is just different from playing like in your, um, your room. Yeah. And speaking of that, like um, playing in front of people is one thing. And like how you're saying wh- where you go to Nam and you play in front of all the ukulele artists, that's a whole different ball game too. Cause it's like, man, are they critiquing my chords? Or <laughs> I remember the first, the first time uh, we went to Nam and I played in front of everybody. Like this is the first time ever we, I got together with the Kamako people. And mm-hmm. so it's like, Jake's there and you're there and every, everybody's there. It's like, man, I, I better play this clean so that they, they feel like I'm, I'm worthy to be there. <laughs> oh, man. I know what that feels like. I, I felt the same. I think, was it that 100th anniversary year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah me too. And then I, I just remember I was nervous for the concert itself. But okay. Because yeah. I, I was looking at the set list and I didn't know that they go backwards. Um, yeah. So I was like, oh, I'm going last. I was like, yeah, that's fine, right? <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden, you're up first. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, I mean, just having, having to open for all you guys. I'm like... Dude, like I was like I was sweating bullets, <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was lots of fun though. It was lots of fun and it was good experience. I mean, for us since you know we're now we we're, we're doing a lot of touring and performing, but yeah, yeah. yeah. good times, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, so yeah, so how is it from competing in in a ukulele competition and then running it? That's pretty crazy. Yeah, so you 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 definitely get to see both sides. I mean, when I was growing up. Um, well, again, back to the, the story I was telling in the beginning. Um, my mindset was, I'm better than everybody. And you get in my way, I'm just going to plow you over because my skills is like that that great. And so for long, for about a year, I was like, Man, nobody stands a chance against me. So I was like, I'm, I got to enter a contest. I got to start smashing some people. And so I went into my first contest and I remember looking back at everybody and I was nervous. I was like, I was super nervous because this is like the first time you're in front of a ton of people. Yeah, but, it's, um, it's very different, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And so I, I went back there. But as soon as I went back there and I heard everybody playing, I was like, man, what was I nervous for? I'm going to smash all you guys today. <laughs> <laughs> so I went up there and ended up losing that contest. Oh, man. And so I was like, man. So at, at that point, I was like, this is a fluke because I was clearly better than everybody yeah. in my mind. And so... um. So about a year later, my grandpa told me to enter another ukulele contest, which was on the Kona side. Mm. And um, same mentality. And my head was even bigger at that point because I had picked up another year of um, progress. Oh, and right, so right. I went back there and I was like, man, this is just like the last time. But this time I'm way stronger than the last time. <laughs> and so um, all the nerves went away again. I, I, I ripped Stars and Stripes forever. And, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I ended up tying for last place. And so I was like, man, I ended up tying for last place with a, a six-year-old girl who was singing and dancing hula and playing hula at the same time. And so I was like, oh. you know, um, contests aren't for me. Was it the, the, the criteria? Because the one here, you have to sing to place. Oh, no, no. She was the only one singing. So it was, it was oh. purely instrumental. But um, yeah, I don't know what, what it was, but it, it definitely was needed because I needed that constant humble pie i mean it didn't end there it was just over and over i mean even after that there were so many things that happened i mean um but i i I know that i needed it to just rub my face in the mud and like hey wake up right and and it helps you you was (laughs) oh yeah i like that you get the khabib man say that i'm going to smash everybody (laughs) and the hamza hamza yeah oh my gosh okay side note i'm so excited to watch him fight now he's fighting december 19th yeah, Liana. You know what you think? Uh, I don't know. Liana is, is a pretty solid fighter. I mean, his yeah, reputation just, is not good at late, as of uh, late, but um, I don't know. I think Hamza is going to smash him. Yeah, I, I think so. I hope so. I, mean, I, 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 I love watching that guy. He's just he's so entertaining. And yeah, I, also, I guess you, you had the inner Hamza back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, think, I think to agree, a, a degree, you know, um, I mean, you're doing something that no one else is doing. So, I mean, I... I mean, I even I made it. I I, I was um, I kind of had a similar mindset. Like, oh yeah, like look, I, I'm just getting all these abilities, you know. And I feel, you know, <laughs> yeah. you, you feel the momentum. But I think it just comes to a point where you need the you need to get the humble pie because that yeah. makes you a lot better. And that's when I I think I, I had no idea what I was trying to do, but I was trying to improvise. You know, <laughs> I was like, oh, I think I seen Jake do that, but it was like in a whole different key. And my friend's like, dude, you gotta you gotta learn your skills. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so I ate my pie and it digested like four years later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's it's definitely what's needed. But yeah, so so, but you did win one contest, right? Um, ukulele contest wise, I think that was the that was it. But then I went, entered another uh, contest, which was a music contest. Oh. So it was against like uh, classical pianists and and just a whole different ball game. But because of that. Um, I guess the ukulele. I was the only ukulele player, so it stood out a little bit more. Mm. And um, and that at that point, um, I was already getting humble pie left and right. I mean, I thought I was going to stop, but it never stopped, and oh. it never stopped for a long time. And so at that point, was like I was more um, on the humble side, I guess, and was able to relate to people more and mm. to to like. Like they give you a chance to talk in, in the beginning of the contest. And yeah. it's like, you're able, because you took so many L's, now you're able to relate more to people. And you're, now you don't think that you're um, on a God-like level. Now you are more, you, you're more relatable. Right, right. I think, I think just the order of how that happened might have been a good thing, you know? Yeah, definitely. Like you, you took the win after, you know, okay, I had my pie. Can I win now? <laughs> you know, and I understand it. But I think I think there's a line, right? I think it's there's nothing wrong with being completely confident in your abilities, but yeah. then once it starts, like, oh, y'all yeah, go smash it. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, except for Hamza, he can say that. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 just I think it's important that that line doesn't cross. Yeah, because there's a di- a big difference between um, confidence and arrogance. Yeah, definitely. and um, yeah, so like I mean, even today, I, I I try to stay completely confident and not arrogant. You know, and I think that's super important. Always be humble, you know, being respectful and all that. So, oh, yeah, the, oh, the, thanks for the story, man. That's, that's a, I never even knew that one. <laughs> <laughs> but even after that, you know, like, after I won the first place out there, then I had a relapse. And I was like, I'm the king again. <laughs> and then I was like, so I, I, I went back to uh, my regular daily life. And um, then I ended up failing my ukulele class because I felt like I could teach the class. And so I stopped like attending it on a regular basis and I, I didn't show up for my test ended up failing my ukulele class and I ended up failing band class because I couldn't read music oh. and so I, I dropped all these things and I was like you know I'm just gonna go weight training way way easier to do weight training than to music <laughs> <laughs> yeah I remember having that mindset I was like I don't want to learn the theory because I feel like we're you know developing developing the tools we're learning you know like you know having like that jake foundation yeah it's like when you go to class it's like, okay whole whole half you know it's just like i don't want to do that you know it's just like, <laughs> i want to shred so yeah, i know yeah. i know what you mean because i even i failed a couple of classes too because i maybe it, it has to do with um the arrogance or whatever but i was like yeah i don't, I don't want to go to that you know i just, I wanna, I just <laughs> play so i yeah. i do understand a little bit <laughs> that's cool and yeah so like so after having all that contest exper- experience how is it like, oh, here, come to enter my contest, you know? And eight, eight years, congrats, man. Oh, thanks. Uh, but yeah, like the first year was, was crazy because I was the MC, I was a sound man, oh. I was a judge, I was a picture taker. And so it was like <laughs> nuts. And then, I got, oh. and then I was the person who uh, performs at the end um, and announced all the winners and stuff. So it has really evolved since then. Um, and this year it's it's awesome too because we open it up to the world and so now you like um like you watch the videos too and you well, you see yeah. all these different styles coming from different parts of the world and like there's this girl that um her name well yeah this is coming out later yeah her name is anastasia and man it's like she's playing harmonics like nuts and she's like she's playing harmonics while keeping a beat on the ukulele while strumming and yeah. picking i was like Man, that you would never have thought that this there's still hidden gems for the ukulele around the world. I mean, you're you're so used to seeing the the um the regular ukulele artists that you see all the time, and you you don't realize that there's so many there's so much more um hidden talents around the world. Yeah, no, I was I was very impressed by the um the contestants. I mean, I literally wrote Fang has entered the chat. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I was like, oh, <laughs> like, you know, and then yeah, just I mean, even the other contestants too, it's just like the stack division, you know. Yeah. And then, yeah, it was just so yeah. Thanks for letting me be a judge. I had a good time. It's the first time I've been on that side. I've always been a contestant growing up, so it was really cool just to sit in the judge's seat and um, yeah, just that it was really cool. It was awesome. I mean, I 
it was cool to see your um your score sheet everybody's score sheet i mean everybody was pretty much saying the sim uh similar things because man the talent was pretty unreal this year yeah yeah it was crazy so um yeah are you, are you gonna have one next year or yeah so um hopefully um we can go back to the live thing but yeah. now that we've had a little taste of the world ukulele contest yeah. it's like we want to try um alternate so that oh, we good. can also give the the ukulele players, players around the world uh, a chance to showcase their skills on a, a higher level yeah and uh for you for you the those are out there i encourage you to try to you know get out of the comfort zone and try to enter these contests because it really helps develop you you know it's like you feel you feel just like a, I guess you could say it's a pressure. It's but it's also yeah. it's so satisfying, and I just remember my first contest. It was just like oh my gosh, this first time I'm playing in front of people. But but again, that was a live one, and it's just it's there's nothing you cannot lose anything from entering. You're just yeah. gonna grow as a player. So I encourage anyone if you have the opportunity next year enter uh, Chris's ninth annual Kola competition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many contests did you enter? I uh, man, so I, I only entered two. Well, I actually entered three, including a brown bag to start them. Oh, okay. So the first year we didn't sing, so I was like, okay, we didn't place because here, remember, you need to you need to play with the place, you need to sing. Yeah. And we're like, oh, because we came up, we came up with body surfing, and we're like, oh, <laughs> we had to sing, we didn't know that, you know. <laughs> so the, the the interesting thing is the next year I was a freshman, right? <clears throat> I actually learned, you know, Bruce's uh, Bruce's uh, Bruce wrote this song called Bits and Pieces. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like I know Jake's the, brother, Bruce? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had sang that. <laughs> <laughs> I still got video somewhere, but yeah, like, I think I only sang one verse because I was like, oh, like, I want to at least try to place. And then, <laughs> and then I played, I think I went from, because I, and then apparently I heard like, oh, they like to hear a little bit of wine. So I threw a guava jam in there. And then I ended with, a, I, played, I think I played Let's Dance, actually. <laughs> and then, and then. Yeah, so I was like, oh, hopefully I do a good job. And then I was in my bracket. It was like the lightweight division. It was like, it was stacked. And Kalai Camarillo in there. And he was oh, wow. this behind the head. And guess who was the champion? Who was that? Neil Chin. Oh, seriously? Yeah, he, he, he won. He won. He won two class. Like, dude. Neil is awesome. from Maui. Neil, yeah. So, like, I had to go up I against know that. Kalai Camarillo and Neil Chin. And I was like, wow. And I got third and then they got second and first. And then, and then after that, I, didn't, I never saw Neil again <laughs> and until recently, until, you know, like the past few years. But yeah, I just, I always remembered him because he was playing, like, I remember he played, I first saw him play like Blue Rose as well. I'm like, oh, you know, I, I know that stuff, you know? Yeah. So that oh, was Neil. my experience growing up. And for some reason, I thought, um, I thought Neil was from the mainland. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, he's he's a Maui boy. Both of the both of those guys, you know. So I remember seeing them at the contest, and I just uh, well, Neil. Now Neil resides in um, Washington. He was in Oregon for a while. Oh, yeah, but yeah, that's so. That's my contest story gro uh, growing up. So yeah, I had some hammers in my my bracket. <laughs> that that's crazy too. I mean, um, Kalai is a real. He's a winner too, man. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's so awesome, like at a young age like that, that you're surrounded with such high level competition already. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just, it just, it cannot do you do any negative towards you. It just helps you grow as a person and, and musician. Right. And it's just like, and just looking back, it's just like, look, look at the two guys who, who won. Everyone's doing great things. Yeah. You know, Neil's yeah. really successful in the ukulele world, you know, the workshops, Kalai too, man. You got to want a hoku? It's like, man, it's just yeah. awesome. It's, it's just so cool to see. Like, man, I was in that, that bracket with these guys. And it was just, <laughs> it's cool, man. It's cool. I think, what, you went up against Clay too, right? Uh, yeah, that was the first one. <laughs> so that was my first ukulele contest. And um, yeah, they flew down for the contest. And it was actually me and him in the final round. Isn't that and crazy? Then, so I, I lost to him by one point on the qualification night, which was like three nights before. And then I lost to him by one point on the final night. Oh, I see. I see. Man, but, but right there, look at the, that's a stacked bracket too. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's just. And the, the funny thing is that Brittany was judging that one. Oh, for all? Wow. <laughs> it's kind of cool, like how our peers, like, is it, we, have, we have the same peers as, you know, back when we were kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, man, that's cool, man. So. Yeah, and now, 
a lot of people always ask me like, oh, how is it playing with your dad? And you're probably the only one I can talk to about this because I think, I'm not sure if there's anyone besides Herb that, that plays with their oh, parents. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, how is that dynamic? Um, I mean, obviously it's, it's, it must be re- really cool you know, get to be able to travel with your mom and stuff like that. I like it. Like um, my just traveling with my mom alone. I mean, when you're away from home, um, just playing music, like the the audience sees the high point where you, where you're in front of them or you're doing a workshop or something like that. But then the in between is where it gets lonely. Like the drive there, the hotel stay, or everything that goes on behind the scenes, and it's so. Um, Awesome. I think that you you'd probably feel the same way that you have that um, familiarity with you um, all the time, and you have a piece of home with you all the time. And and what better way um, to spend time with your parents than on the road playing music? Definitely, definitely. And it's like I think when I'm with my dad versus when I'm alone, I feel like I can stay away from home longer. So like, oh, I don't really miss home as much because he's with yeah. me. But like, if you were to go like solo, it's like. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely different. But yeah, it's just it's just really cool. And um, I, I guessing sometimes um, you 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 guys ever like argue about music and stuff like that? Um, during practice, like <laughs> when it's like uh, when you're trying to find an arrangement, it's like this sounds this sounds good. Like no, this sounds good. <laughs> uh, we should try this. No, we shouldn't try that. We should try this. But then in the end, like you you give and take, and you you try both, and you see which one actually sounds better. But yeah, that, I think that's as far as the, uh, the arguments ever go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember for me, just like my first couple of years of like, I guess, in the, in the professional, my, um, the professional area of when I started, you know, playing and performing, I just remember every performance, you'd be like, just immediately the critique is coming up. Like, oh, no. <laughs> like, and then just like, I remember, at, I remember at the first NAM. Like, I think I made, like, so much mistakes on one song. And then he goes, did you think that was good? I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, but like, it used to be pretty brutal. And he always was, uh, and my mom was like, oh, it'll be easy on him. But no, I mean, you it was. <laughs> you don't just, seem like that, though, nowadays. What is that? Your dad. He doesn't seem like he liked that. Well, yeah, I mean, well, the thing is, I just, I think I just changed my mind. Well, I don't mess up as much now, too. Because, right? <laughs> yeah, like, and, and, it, and it started becoming a thing where, I couldn't, like, every time, you know, you get the hard part of the song coming up, right? Yeah. And then it's just like, and it's just like, oh, no, if I mess up, he's going to yell at me, you know? Like, <laughs> so that was like, it was just, I, I lost mentally because I just couldn't, I was afraid that he was going to say something. So, like, I think once 2018 came around, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to try, I'm going to solo, and I don't care. If I mess up, it's okay. <laughs> But then I started messing up less because whenever you're worried about something happening, a lot of times it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, it <does>. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, for the most part, that's, um, yeah, that's, I guess. But yeah, it's all good now. I don't mess up as much. <laughs> but it's definitely, it's definitely, definitely special, you know. But, you know, you have, it's like you have a, a piece of home with you at all times. And it's just, yeah. I don't know, it's just an experience. It's just a feeling that no one, a lot of people don't relate to. I mean, I have a lot of people coming up to me. So I wish I, you know, I played with my dad and I'm pretty sure a lot of people come up to you, you know, that talk about yeah. that bond because it's so unique, you know? Yeah, it definitely is. And so it's just, yeah, I can't wait to go on the road. <laughs> All this tour <laughs> talk is making me travel. Oh, speaking, <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, touring, like when did that, when did that start for you? Um, well, we would go to like ukulele festivals here and there. So that's not uh, necessarily touring. But the first actual tour that we went on, um, I believe was, I think it would have to be Korea back in 2014 uh-huh. or something like that. Uh-huh. But that was like the first time ever. I get, I get car sick really easily. And so when, I went on, when we went on the road and I had to sit in the back seat um, of the car, I was just getting this crazy car sickness. And I was like, man, is this what touring life is? Because I don't think I can cut it. You're going to have to get a bus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to walk everywhere or something. Oh. Um, was that just there or was that like, because I know you drive, right? When you go to the mainland. Like if you go yeah, like yeah, California yeah. So, and stuff. So, uh, California and all that, we, I, I usually drive there. But then uh, international, we usually have somebody taking us around. But, um, you know, as the years have progressed, um, touring has gotten easier and it's more enjoyable now. Whereas the first uh, time you were touring, you're so nervous and you're not yeah. sure if people are going to really accept the way you play and stuff like that. But 
towards um, nowadays, it's like you you have more of that confidence. You walk in with more confidence, and and um, and I guess it also comes with learning your craft a lot a lot more as the years progress. Right, and it's just being more confident in your craft too. And yes, you know, just and we have to always keep in mind this is like you know we're not going to be able to please everybody. You know, music is uh, subjective. So yeah, even if, yeah. you know, we get like a bad review or, you know, we get someone says something, we shouldn't let it get to us too much. Yeah. And that's hard, you know, when you're first going, you know, that's, and that's why I think what keeps people from going to open mics because they're afraid of the criticism. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it's just, yeah, it's just a whole, it's a, it's a mental game. But, um, so out of, where have you, so you've gone to quite a few places. I know you went to like Guam, right? Or you, yes. We went to, um, Guam, Korea, Japan, China. Um, all over the U.S. Ah, uh, yes, China. Um, Tahiti. Uh, I can't remember. Well, yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head. Those are the those, those are the ones that stick out to me. But um, yeah, I mean Tahiti. I mean you went there too. We gotta talk about Tahiti. Oh my gosh, because I know you you um you wrote a song, right, Moya Moya? Yeah, yeah. That was after our trip there. I mean, man, the people there are like you talk about Aloha Aloha Spirit times like a thousand. Yeah, I mean you literally just go there and they it's as if you were family all these years and it's <clears throat> it's just crazy to to see the how much love they give you love and support and they just they love music like it's it's if somebody's playing music they stop what they're doing and they start watching they give you their total attention and they don't speak until you're you're done playing so it was tahiti is just one of my favorite places to be it's it's magical i i hope I have the opportunity to go again. You know, when I went, I think, I think Aiden went went with you, you, right? Yeah. Yeah. He he, he was there with us. So, you know, I got really close to Aiden and yeah, like, man, it just from the hotel and, you know, hanging out with Lindsay and Maima, you know, just those awesome people. Shout out to you guys. If you're watching (laughs) a brother, Maru, man, killer on guitar. Um, Crazy, crazy talent. And it's just, I don't know. It's just, I feel like it's like an alternate Hawaii. It's like, it's what well, one is. I feel like it was a little bit hotter there too. Like my, yeah, my pretty, dad got dark, and that says a lot because he's already dark. I mean, you yeah, you walk out of the the hotel room, and yeah. the humidity just it's like a punch in the face. <laughs> it's yeah, I just oh, I, I miss that place. Did you try any of the interesting foods they had there? No, uh, that's what I was just about to say. I was like, man, <laughs> they offered that fish thing to to me and Aiden the first time we went, and. Um, and, and we, we declined because I was like, man, I'm not going to eat that. And then um, a few years later, you went and I was like, and I saw the video. I was like, oh, man, I can't believe you ate that. Dude, no, that <laughs> thing, like, because um, where did they offer you that at? Did you? It was at like a buffet restaurant. They just brought it out for us to oh, try okay, it out. Okay. I was like, no ways. Yeah, like we had this, it was like a Tahitian luau they took us to. Okay. It was like, yeah, the way they cook the food, you know, it's like, and then the fish is even, it's not like poke, it's like. It's just like a different style, but it's really cool because we can see the similarities. Yeah. yeah. So we're all at the table and then Aiden and his mom are next to me and my dad. And then I see the fish and I'm like, oh, I remember seeing the Unsurvivor. I got to try it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so like I remember, and they were eating it like it was like, um, like it was candy. Like, okay, I'm going to, you know, like chips in the yeah. air. And then I'm just like, okay, maybe not too bad. But then, oh man, it was, it was, uh, <laughs> I, I still ate like, it's like for me, I was like, okay. I just did it for the glory. <laughs> it's rotten, huh? It's rotten. Uh, fermented, <laughs> to be more exact, with fermented <laughs> coconut milk. But I was like, you know, I'm, I'm just going to do it. And then I, I think, I was like, come on, Aiden, let's do it. And then he's like, no. <laughs> and then his mom tried it. And I'm never, I'm never going to forget what she said, but she goes, this tastes like an armpit. And I was like, okay. But she, I think she tried it before me. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, like, you know, that's not good. And then my dad had a little tiny piece like that. And then, yeah, he, yeah, it was, um, I don't know, you just, it's just, for me, it was just like, okay, I'm just going to do it just for the, it's not because it tasted good, because yeah. it's like, I want to take it off my bucket list or something, so that was, <laughs> that was interesting, yeah, it was a, it was a really good experience, you know, Tahiti, um, and we played in front of a McDonald's, which is a very, which was a first for me, Oh wow! but it was, <laughs> yeah, right, but it was like, I guess it was like the spot to go to where the kids got out of school, yeah, so like it's like the most crowded McDonald's I've ever seen, and then wait. So there was there was a set audience there, or you just was playing? I don't know if by? it was just. I think it was just kids off of school or something. But it was a <laughs> lot of people. I was like, wow, 
this McDonald's must be the spot or something. Cause I was like, Damn, <laughs> this is this is pretty interesting, you know. Yeah. And yeah, so we had that, and then I think you did the you probably did like the new station thing too, right? Yeah, and then we so, were also um, we were able to do that Guinness World Record thing. Oh with, right, right, right. With the players playing the same song at the same time, and they were at that time they had the the record. I mean, I f- I totally forget the re- what the record was like five thousand something, but I think China blew that out of the water a few years later oh wow really yeah oh i didn't know that damn but that was a crazy experience i mean like you're there and i mean they love music so much that as soon as you walk on stage like the the roar of the crowd just starts shaking the entire stage it was it was that nuts yeah no i remember i just remember that was that was special about tahiti was just the yeah just the energy from the people and i just I remember from when I was on there, I practiced some French actually. Because I was like, I want to, but hopefully it doesn't come out stupid, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. right? I, I wanted to be accurate. So I was, I remember just the whole week, I was like, okay, I, I can't, I can't, I can't even remember now. It's been so long. But yeah, I remember I practiced French, but I don't, I hope they understood what I said. Like, <laughs> I think it was the same theater you played at. Okay. Yeah. 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 Kind of. It was like, probably the same one. Kind of um, central area. I forget I forget what is what it's called, but I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So that was um, that was pretty cool. But would you say that was like your favorite touring experience, or? Um, that's yeah. That's that has to be one of my favorites. I mean, just just for the just for the people. I yeah, mean, yeah. it it just felt comfortable the whole time you were there. Definitely, you know, it, it's, that's always gonna have a special place in my heart. And I yeah, I really again like I really hope uh, the opportunity to go there again because it was it was a very unique experience yeah, i hope that uh, the next time the the two of us can go dude th- that would be crazy <laughs> we're doing papa room man <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah that that would be like that would that'd be like the coolest thing yeah man yeah. like yeah hopefully we can run into each other more on the road yeah so yeah. tell me a little bit about something that is very unique is your ukulele what was that your ukulele it's kind of cool because everyone has like their their acts, you know. Every, everyone <laughs> is a little bit different. Like yeah, ha- so for, for that one was um, I wanted to do something different because at that at that time, um, well, I was doing the same thing too. But I, everybody was doing the initials thing on their fretboard, right, right. And so I wanted to kind of step away from that, but I was kind of scared to do it because I was like, okay, so if I put this massive Japanese kanji on top of my board, am I gonna be able to play? And if, right. the, if, the, if the light hits it at the right time, am I going to be able to know where I'm at? No, yeah. Like having like a super, like um, like having a crazy design on the fretboard is kind of like, I don't know. Like, I think I would get a little bit confused. I mean, yours yeah. is not too bad, but I've seen other ukuleles where like it's the entire um, <laughs> yeah. fretboard. I'm just like, I don't know if I can navigate because that's like, we need to navigate too. It's not like yes. we're just going to hang it up, you know? So, so the, you, you really got to have those... Um, those placement dots need to be really dominant where you can see them on the side so yeah. that you don't get lost. Yeah, you should do what Jake does. He puts like, uh, I think he told me he, um, he puts like, I don't know, like he punches holes and he tapes it or something. Like, you're like five, oh, really? seven, ten, and 12. Yeah, because he goes, he goes, <laughs> yeah, sometimes when, you know, he gets those big stage lights, right? You know, the yeah. spotlight on you and he goes, I had a hard time seeing my dots. So yeah, he, he taped like, he taped like little hole, like, um, you know, like from a hole puncher, yeah? Little circles. Oh. Yeah, just so he can, he knows. What yeah, that's he's a going. good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because sometimes even like, um, either the the stage lights are too bright, or you're in a venue where it's super dark. Yeah, and pretty much playing by feel. Oh, that's a great idea, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, for to a degree, we can play with feel, but at the same time, especially if you're going from like a, I don't know, like a F to like a like a high D minor seven, but you're, yeah, that's that's distance. It's not like it's you're just yeah. sliding down a fret. So you need to, yeah, you need to have some kind of reference. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah for me, it's just like I always have five, seven, ten, and twelve dots. Fifteen, I don't know. I, yeah, maybe once, but the third, the, the third dot always confuses me because I always yeah. associate the the one at the very left is my five. Oh yeah. So okay, so that's the yeah that I mean that's cool. I thought that the kanji was uh, very different, you know, because like like you say, you know, everyone was starting to doing initials. Because I come on, yeah. after Jake's one, it's like I want my initials on there too. Yeah, that, it was, that's definitely what it was too. Yeah, and, you, I mean, and I, your your first one right has the has your initials on it. 
Yeah, that was like a, I mean, I got that when I was 15. So it was around that era where I was just, I needed to be, everything needed to be exactly like what Jake was doing. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that, man. Oh, uh, so, but yeah, the new club definitely is definitely you. Yeah. And we're hopefully we're, I mean, this one is, I think it's like six years old already. I mean, I can't believe it's been six years already, but now we got to, I mean, I was talking to you about it, like at now. Oh, yeah planning out something i mean I'm not, i might not go with what i was talking about because i was like eh, maybe too blingy but then i don't know we, we gotta draw up something <laughs> dude it's no it's perfect for the king <laughs> <laughs> dude like how much would that cost like you, you said gold right yeah so if you were to put actual gold on there man that thing is probably 15 over fifteen thousand dollars just oh, for the gold <laughs> Man, so that's like, was that, are you talking about like gold um, inlay or gold in like purfling? So the, the, my idea was to have the kanji in gold and then to put, um, it was like either real diamonds around the sound hole or fool everybody and get cubic zirconia and put it around the sound hole. Oh man. So it's, it's, a, it's a little cheaper route, but um, right, right, I mean, right. People wouldn't know. cubic zirconia. I mean, yeah, you cannot tell the difference unless you, you bite into that thing. But um, <laughs> so that was the plan. I mean, to have um, gold on the fretboard and then around the sound hole and around the, the outer rim of the ukulele, just all diamonds. But after thinking about it, I was like, man, that looks, that looks kind of cheesy. The gold? And so nah. we gotta... <laughs> What would Father McGregor do? He would get the gold. <laughs> Especially, I mean, if you were to put actual gold on top there, um, and then you got to strap that ukulele onto your body, you're going to walk away with a sore back every performance. <laughs> oh, I guess it would be like heavy. Yeah, it'd right? be kind of heavy. Oh, I see, I see. Hey, I mean, that's that would be unique. And you probably have the most <laughs> expensive ukulele in the world. Yeah. Oh man, that's crazy gold. Yeah, it's like yeah. I mean, for, even for mine, like I wanted to do something that was different. And at the time, I remember, you know, Jake had this red theme. I think it's Buffy, right? Buffy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It was red, right? So I remember in high school, freshman year. And yes, I'm on record. I'm saying this, but I was like, you know, when I grow up, I want to get an ukulele that has blue binding. So I had this vision <laughs> for this ukulele since I was a maybe a sophomore, freshman in high school, because like yeah, you know. Cause I then I you know I saw you have yours I'm like you know when I when I grow up I'm gonna get my you know my initials or whatever, <laughs> and then like I put my order in right, and then like a year later Jake's is blue I was like ah, oh. <laughs> damn, I'm like, oh man, but I had the idea first, <laughs> and it's funny because like everybody has blue now I think I think even Herb's Zuckel is blue I think yeah yeah uh, the the Lux model is blue I'm just like oh man. It's the perfect color, though. I mean, it really no, it, it blends really good, well. looks nice with the, with the, with the cola. Yeah. But now it's like, ah, I kind of want red. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, ukulele, you know, ukuleles are always something that's um, always fun to have. And it's, yeah, I always think, like, oh, I don't need another one, but we do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it helps bring out ideas. You know, I don't know if you've ever gone be between your two kamakas and just, like, had different ideas on both, just because the feel and, you know, just the sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. I mean, the, I mean, they, the bodies are pretty, pretty same, but um, just the different sounds that you get from them really yeah. brings different ideas, total, totally different ideas. And um, yeah, like you said, some, um, like my old one, the, the sound was a little more tight. So you, you try to play more full or more open. Uh, this one's a little more open. So now you try to hold back a little bit and you're able to oh, come up with different right, things. Right, right. Interesting. Are, are we ever going to see you with a spruce ukulele? <laughs> Actually, well, I don't know because they sound amazing. But then I seen um, when Jake was with Pure Heart, he had the, the spruce top. And oh, the right, right. Damaged of the damage. I mean, he strummed that thing so hard that the, the top, the board was like non existent on the <laughs> sides already. Oh, man. I got I to gotta find that video. I didn't see it. I know that, yeah, when I talked to him, he said he likes. Um, I mean, I think. Even you, because you prefer a koa too, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, even he was telling me, he goes, I think for me, an ukulele, like the, he likes that ukulele sound of koa, so he says that he don't mainly prefer koa. So is that like your take on it? Or it'd be, oh. you know, it would be so interesting if you post a picture of the spruce, sort of like, wow, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, I mean, the, the whole thing came from Jake. I mean, yeah. 
I mean, that Hon- cool. Honestly speaking, look like, at that curly coil. Yeah, it's be- It's beautiful to look at, and um, it sounds amazing when being played too. So it's Definitely. just the perfect combination. And and taking it from a guy that like Jake, who has who has a, pretty much tried every single thing you can think of on the ukulele to to get the best sound. I mean, yeah. that you would want to um, take that into consideration when making a decision. No, definitely, definitely. And um, for me, I've, I've kind of experimented with different woods. And for when I play low G, I think I prefer the spruce with a, maybe like a rosewood kind of a thing. Yeah. But then for like my high G, something about the koi, yeah. And it, it just looks so badass. <laughs> 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 yeah, I just, I don't know. And I just like... Yeah, it just it compliments. I guess it comes down to your style too, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when we're doing like instrumental shredding stuff, I feel like it really complements the core versus um. I mean, Kalei can shred with the spruce though. <laughs> yeah. So Wait, yeah, Kalei's one get, is Kalei's one is spruce. His uh yeah his Kamaka was, I know this Kalei um <laughs> it's bear claw spruce. With uh I think it's like Indian or Brazilian rosewood back inside. Oh yeah, yeah, the the one with the cutaway. Yeah, yeah, it was. Oh, I think yeah. it was kind of inspired by the hammer. The hammer, if you oh. don't know, is a, like a legendary Kamaku ukulele. It has Kamaka written on the headstock, and it's just like it's the one Jake used for Dragon, the cover. Oh, oh okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's been a while since I've seen um, uh, Kale play with that ukulele because he's been using. Um, I don't, he's not using his custom anymore to perform, right? When he plays the Kamaka, like even at the uh, Nam show, he was playing a different Kamaka, like. I'm not oh, sure you know what? He has the cedar. He, he has like a deluxe cedar. That one is killer. I really yeah, yeah. like that model. He has a killer sound out of that one. Yeah, yeah. Just the, the thing about cedar is like, I, even I wanted a cedar ukulele, but the wood is a little soft. So it's not as yeah. durable. It's like maybe spruce oh. is pretty, and coal is really durable. But yeah, he does he does rep that one from time to time too. Yeah. The cedar. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I see him, I get the trout ukulele. He got some, he got some killer ukulele. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's just interesting, like, because when you start to know, get to know the players, everyone has their, their, their acts, you know, everyone has their unique ukulele, so just yeah. being, being able to play it is just, like, oh, yeah, I've seen ukulele, can I play it? <laughs> yeah, every single time, like, we're at NAM, it's like, it's, um, like, Duck Duck Goose, we're just passing ukuleles around in a <laughs> <the> circle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah, that was fun. Even, yeah, even playing yours was, was, was really cool, and it's like, oh, wow, it's the ukulele with the kanji and <laughs> And so, so you're planning to get the gold one soon, then? Huh? <laughs> well, that that's just in my head. I mean, I thought, still focus, come up with a solid plan. What was that? Still got to come up with a solid plan on on what the thing really is going to look like. Yeah, just I guess something unique. I mean, remember, you, you, just keep in mind you have you got like two years. For yeah. Three so you got yeah. you got some time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right on, man. But uh, yeah, I guess um. Anything else you want to just talk about randomly? Anything coming up, or you know? Um, oh, by the time this this thing comes, this interview comes out, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we have uh, we have the uh, we did a, a collaboration CD with Sony Sony uh, Music Japan, and oh. uh, yeah, so it's it's uh, us Kalani Pea, uh, Tamana Gardner, and a, a few other people uh, on top of this uh, collaboration CD, and it's going to be coming out on uh november 25th i believe it's called aloha and mahalo volume two wow. and so yeah for awesome out there, just look out for that yeah check it out sounds like it's gonna be really good but uh yeah they, i'd like to thank my friend chris fujigami for joining me tonight it was a lots of fun man yeah awesome and, talk uh, story session <laughs> for sure for sure yeah this is chill you know interview is like so like so um serious and stuff this is just like a chill conversation and this is like what it should be about yeah i was thinking about i was like man when every time i when me and andrew get together it's like even at the at the nam show we're just standing there talking about fights for like <laughs> an hour or two yeah, yeah, and then yeah. we don't even realize that nobody's there anymore <laughs> right right yeah even last night we're like oh yeah what's, what's happening what's happening and yeah it's just, <laughs> have you ever okay i have to have you ever experimented with martial arts um i was doing boxing in my teenage years so i was doing boxing for about two years okay. but that's as far as it goes i mean um after taking the music uh, music career more seriously i t- took that into consideration and was like hey, i can't be punching a punching bag or anything yeah. like that anymore so got all, got all the basics down but uh, it's just not practiced anymore uh, i see it's a bad you ever tried jiu-jitsu 
I would try grappling with my friends, but no, no, not actual <laughs> jujitsu. <laughs> Dude, yeah, if you get a chance, man, it's it's lots of fun, and man, like, yeah, I, I just rolled today, and uh, it's funny. I tried to do the Khabib triangle that he threw on the beach. Oh yeah, <laughs> the multi triangle. That was and, nuts, and, man. Yeah, it was. It was that was like that was crazy, and I was just I was really surprised. You know, man, striking was spot on, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people were surprised because everyone thought that he was the um, uh, what's it? They thought he was the answer for Khabib. Yeah, I mean, you see him against, um, you see Gaethje against Tony Ferguson, and their stand-up was like not even close. Yeah. And then you have Khabib, which his stand-up's not that great, but his pressure is unreal that Gaethje couldn't do any stand-up at all. Yeah, no and it's paper. like, and with him, it's just like, if you think about it, you know, you got, you know, McGregor, Poirier, and um, Gaethje, and they fight, right? They just have to worry about stand-up. Yeah, yeah. But what Khabib, like, you you worrying about that takedown too? Yeah. So I think that's how he. I, th- I think that's how he. Um, he got Connor to the ground. Yeah, even yeah, McGregor. I mean, McGregor is like one of the best in the game at stand up, but because he's worried about that takedown all the time, you can't throw a single punch, and he ended right. up getting dropped. Right, right. And then if you look <laughs> vice versa, Khabib don't have to worry about the takedown. Yeah, because so he he's only, gonna win anyways. <laughs> right, because so he only has to worry about the stand up. Yeah, man, that was that was that was good stuff. I can't wait. I kind of hope he fights again. You know, that was a that was a killer fight. Hopefully yeah, he comes back he, for the, the 30 I'm and hoping all. that GSP does something. I mean, it would be killer to see GSP and Khabib, Khabib get in there together. Yeah, or finally what, Ferguson, Khabib for the Oh, time. yeah. <laughs> yeah that, <laughs> I don't think that's happening, man. I don't know. Yeah, it, it'd be, it's hard that to call. cursed. But... Yeah, officially. It's officially <laughs> cursed. Yeah, man, fights, yeah. That's just, like, for me, it's like, what I do, I, I play ukulele. Then, as soon as I'm done playing, I like I'm like watching UFC. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like it's that balance. So yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. If you have it, like, so I think yeah, because even for like for jujitsu, I think it's a it's a perfect balance for music. But my friend was my friend just you recently. Just be careful. Um, <laughs> my friend recently went to the um, jujitsu, and yeah. he was I think he did two weeks and. He was dying. I mean, he was posting on his Instagram. It was like, <laughs> if you thought that you were working out before, you've never worked out before in your <laughs> life. Jiu-Jitsu is crazy. You know, it's a different gas tank. Because I know, because you, you still run or? Yeah, I still, run, I still try to run at least three to four miles a day. Oh, oh. Okay, so your gas tank is already going to be more than average. But I have to tell you, the Jiu-Jitsu gas tank is very different. It's like a new gas tank you got to worry about. Yeah. Because like we, like we train with a guy who does like... um this crossfit but he was like man he goes you know that intensity of crossfit it's it's up there but then once you get into like once you get into the gi once you're rolling and you, you feel that that fight or flight mentality and that feeling it just starts gassing you out so i can't even <laughs> imagine what gate was feeling you know and we're just yeah, rolling with each other you know they they're like the championship belts so th- there is that i think it's just that yeah that fight um stamina which is different yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah, so like if you roll, yeah, I can guarantee you that you're gonna be sore. But if you keep up with it, it'll be lots of fun. <laughs> <laughs> you you ever get scared though that you you might um, injure yourself or your arm or something in there? Um, for a while I was. I mean, I were all pretty relaxed. Uh, I just um, I rode with a couple friends now, and we 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 go super uh, super chill. We're in a, we, we're not gonna injure anybody, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes we do no gi because you know sometimes like like for me like I actually hurt my my knuckle. Rolling with the gi, I grabbed the guy's gi like this, and he jumped over me, and my, oh. my knuckle came out or something like that. But it, it's still sore, and that was like five years ago. Oh, oh man. yeah. So, but it's 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 yeah. As long as you're rolling with people who are like, um, just like not in super aggro mode. Yeah, I mean, there are different paces. You know, like sometimes we just flow to relax and learn positions, but then some people say, like, "Okay, I'm going for blood today." <laughs> So, yeah, so it's, it's, um, but I'm not too worried. I mean, my dad is always worried. Oh my gosh, wash your hands. So, like, yeah, he's always worried about that. But I'm like, you know, it's okay. You know, it's safe and safe environment. But I mean, of course, there's always something that can happen. Yeah, because even you when know, I played, um, I played football in high school. Oh. And that one is like, I, I try to wear gloves, but I mean, the gloves isn't going to do anything. If somebody hits me the wrong way, my fingers are just going to be oh, gone. Dude, yeah. And even, yeah, if you fall the wrong way, you land the wrong way. And um, yeah, you have, I think you have more of a chance of getting hurt if you're doing like starting from stand up. That's why I, yeah. I was terrified of doing stand up. Like, because yeah. for tournaments, we'd have to 
start standing up, you know, and then usually someone who gets to take down, then you go into guard. So I was terrified. So I didn't know how to sprawl. And I remember I popped my, my ankle out one day. It's about six <laughs> years ago. And I was like, oh, I'm scared of doing stand up. But yeah, I mean, I'm going to try to learn to embrace it because I'm not really afraid anymore. But yeah, I just, it's all like learning how to fall, learning the movements. If you don't know the yeah. movements, like if I were to give advice, I would just say start off and go slow. But it's hard because, you know, it's like, we're all the guys too. So there's that, there's that mentality. Well, I got to win, you know, that, yeah, that primal instinct. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's like, <laughs> so it's kind of, um, it's hard, but it's, it's, it's very humbling. Like if we ever have that, you know, I'm the king mindset. Oh yeah, we're going to get choked out, man. Like, so in a way it's kind of, it's kind of good of uh, keeping you um, humble, I guess. Cause this yeah. is, it's not an easy sport, man. I mean, like I did jujitsu since 2012 when I just got my blue belt like two years ago <laughs> versus like I did karate for two years and I got my brown belt. There's a huge difference. Yeah, yeah And yeah. we didn't, and it was, you know, it was mainly kata and stuff like that. So it was never like contact, but this is like, this is like one of the only sports you can truly get like physical contact and, you know, you're going to chunk, chunk each other out, right? So it's <laughs> definitely, a, definitely a unique uh, experience. And if you get the, um, you just, what was the other one you said? You jujitsu and what was the other? Uh, that one was like, it's kind of like karate. Oh, so you, man, you was like, you'd be like the uh, next wonder boy. <laughs> 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 because that's pretty much what it is. I mean, like people start getting off in jujitsu or wrestling and then they pick up the stand up later or whatever. But it's like, man, you got, you got the tools, man. <laughs> I don't know the ring the, the or the octagon. Oh, man, I don't know what wonderful <laughs> ukulele world. <laughs> I don't know about that, man. Yeah, no, I, I would be scared to stand up. Yeah, like I'd rather grapple. It's yeah, yeah. It, it's the safest contact sport, I would say. That's yeah. what they they call it the gentle art. You know, the worst thing can happen is you go to sleep. Tap, let's say tap, <laughs> snap, or nap. So you, <laughs> right. So it's and it's another thing. That, like if you you know if you don't want to drop the ego, you could break your arm just because. You, I don't want to tap today, you know, but it's, yeah. you need to, you need to tap and it just, oh, man. it's humble pie on another level. I mean, you thought the ukulele thing was humble pie. This is humble pie. <laughs> I get it served like once a week. <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite a journey though. It's, it's lots of fun and it's just, it's good. Just, I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a good outlet, I would say. Yeah. Because yeah. especially with like, you know, everything going on now, it's like, you, know, you get frustrated. Oh, I want to go on the road. But then when you go there, it's just, it's for me, it's become kind of like a therapy. So now I just like, I can't wait to fall on my gear and go, oh, get to roll today. Yeah, definitely. Cause it's like something that takes your mind away from everything that's going on. And you just focused on that one thing at that, at that one moment in time. No, definitely. Definitely. So it's, yeah, man. Hey, if you, I, if you ever start, I got tips for you. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe one day. Yeah, but again, you know, it's, of course, you got, we got to wash the hands. You know, that's yeah. that's what we do. That's our life. So, it's just yeah, if you do roll, just make sure it's um, around people who understand. Like when I used to train at the academy, it's like, oh, watch his hands, you know, <laughs> because they know that it's you know, if I something happens to my hands, you know, like I cannot play. It. Yeah. So yeah, it's just finding finding good training partners. You you yeah. train with uh, Michael Grande. Oh yeah, I rode with uh, I rode with him actually once, and it's funny like the story of when I met him was like because we used to train in um, me and my friend were living on Oahu. That's when I went to go see a Pakele. Oh okay, <laughs> like long time ago. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was training it was training on Oahu, and I was living there, and then I just remember, you know, we're starting to under like learn the, the different belts. You know, like people would come in. It was it was a pretty huge class. And I remember there was just one brown belt, which is Mike Grande. And I just remember looking, I'm like, I know this guy. <laughs> I'm like, what do I know him from? I'm, and then I rolled after roll, like, oh my gosh, the guy from the Jake DVD. <laughs> the play loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, like, I was like, oh, I know you. I know. I love that DVD, you know? <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's how I met Michael Grande. And I, I rolled with him a couple times. Yeah, he's like, he's, you know, he's black bell, you know, he's, he's been doing it for a long time. And I think. Oh, serious? Even, wow. Yeah, and I think even Jake was telling me that um, I think Jake attended a Jiu Jitsu class or something one day because jake was a wrestler before i have to talk to him about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah jake was a wrestler that's that's just crazy like i'm trying to try to picture him like doing just major takedowns <laughs> 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 yeah yeah jake, yeah oh man that's crazy see like it, i guess that was a maybe that was a balance for him too 
yeah, you know, yeah. like physical activity. Yeah, physical is, I mean, it's good that you, you know, you, you run and you, you know, you, you're in, taking care of the, phys, you know, the physical part of life. Yeah. yeah. Like, what is your goal setting uh, process? Um, well, when I was 13 or 14, I made three goals for myself. So I try to make them like in a distance. So I was like, okay, before I'm 30, I want to get this, this, this done. So my goals when I was 13, I was like, okay, Jake is, Jake is with Sony. Jake is with Kamaka. So I want to do those. Things. And Jake won a Hoko award. So I want to try to do those things before I'm 30 as well. And so, I mean, even though they weren't like my main goals as time went on, they're still in the back of my head. Like, yeah, I said this when I was 13 years yeah. old. I want to still try, I want to try to make it happen. And so having Kamaka and then um, the Hoko award uh, last year and then, um, Dude, congrats again, man. We're all proud of you. <laughs> oh, thanks, that is man. so cool. That is so cool. <laughs> and then the, the Sony thing that we just released, I was like, I barely made it, but uh, I barely made my kid dreams come true, but I made it come true. So oh. um, I know you just, uh, goals for me is like, you, you, you got to set them and um, set, uh, setting a realistic goal is always important because you don't want to set something that you, you know that there's no flying chance of it happening and then you just end up disappointing yourself. So right and i think this is something that's kind of overlooked and it's like whenever i i teach a workshop i always talk about how setting goals is super important yeah. you know like even in school you know like i think everybody was learning somewhere with the rainbow and then there's me learning oh my god jelly leaves <laughs> so i was like before the semester ends i'm gonna learn and these were small goals at the time right like, i'm gonna learn let's dance uh, me and shirley t and um i think it was yeah jelly leaves and that was my goal. That was like a little short-term goal, right? Yeah. And then it's like, and then I knew that summer was coming. So I'm like, oh, I want to learn. It never happened because it was so damn hard, but Spain. <laughs> 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 but I did Orange World instead, which is, you know, that's, that's a super hard song. But yeah, yeah, it's just like having these little periodic goals with deadlines. You know, yeah. you need to have those deadlines. And, um, and that will light a fire under you, I, I yeah. think. And it's it really, really helpful. But it like, in my head, as like, even though I was a kid, and I used to like, I remember I used to tell even some of my classmates, I was like, oh yeah, when, when I grow up, you know, I want to, um, what did I say? I used to just say, and I always, I just believed, like Naruto, yeah? <laughs> you know, he always <laughs> believed in himself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I just remember, I used to be like, yeah, you know, one day I want to travel the world, play ukulele, you know, I want to have Jake on my album. You know, people thought I was crazy. So it's just like, like, yeah, and it's just, it started happening. I'm like, wow. And that's all because of the power of belief in yourself. Yeah. So I definitely. think, yeah, so for whoever's watching, ukulele players, any, any in general, I think it's important to have goals. And, you know, the only thing that's going to stop you is, is yourself. Because imagine if we didn't have those goals, you know. You know? Yeah, and I feel like um, when you set the goal, I mean, there's times you probably forget about it and because it's such a long time ago, but I feel like you – because you believe in you believe in it so much and you believed in it so much at one point you subconsciously are just do things that are gonna, that are going to get you there and yeah. just having that goal set at that moment in time is is good for you cuz then you have something to really work towards in your life right and it's exciting you want to make goals that are very very exciting you know yeah. if you're going to make a goal shoot for gold you know why are you going to shoot for bronze <laughs> so it's, and we have one shot we really only have one shot so it's just like why not go for it and it's just a, a mindset that I've adapted. Like even, even this, like it was like a month ago. I'm like, you know what? I think I want to do a podcast. <laughs> so, so, and then my mom's like, are you sure about that? And you're like, well, what if it was, idea, though. I, I just like, I was thinking about something, you know, something to pass the time, something to, you know, to give our, you know, our, you know, fans or whatever friends, something just to, to watch and something to get into, you know, while we're in, yeah. in the times like this. And, and that's just my mindset. I'm just like, I'm going to do it. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't know. Like, technically, technically it could go bad or whatever. But <laughs> that, that's the difference of, like, the mindset. Like, and, um, like, even my dad was like, you sure about that? You sure about that? But for me, there's, there's really no what if. It's just, like, when kind of a yeah, thing. Yeah. So I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. But I just, yeah, <laughs> like that. So, but I had a really good time. Thanks for being my first guest. I don't know the order of what we're going to post this, but Chris was the first guest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah th hey thanks for having me I, and i knew this was going to be fun because oh like, dude <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about I was like man we, we connect on so much things that yeah it's just going to be i mean we're, get, we're gonna get lost in time for uh, sure, talking. For <laughs> sure. yeah I, I, I definitely um but it was yeah lots of fun again like you know 
there's so much like our origins were very very similar you know the um you know the jake influence and all that and it was <laughs> ufc i mean come on <laughs> yeah it was just lots of fun and i'm looking forward to um yeah man looking for the jamming soon yeah hopefully soon i mean i'm waiting till like covid testing is more like swab of the cheek rather than stick that oh, thing up your nose man. yeah even the ufc <laughs> fight yeah, I mean, I seen Dana White do it, and I was like, oh, my goodness, that thing is, like, almost to their brain. Yeah, even Masvidal was like, oh, you know, like, <laughs> coughing. Yeah, that, oh, I don't know about that. Even, like, yeah, some of some of our friends, they just they just took it just to take it. Yeah. And, yeah, they're like, that thing is long. They put it up your nose or whatever. So, yeah, I'm going to pass on that. When it comes to that kind of stuff, I kind of handle. I'm hoping they come out with something easier so that then maybe more people will, will not be so scared of um, – catching a flight somewhere because you know that the test is not so bad. Right, right. And I just, I'm really hoping that hopefully quarter one of 2021, we can finally start going back to normal. We don't know, but I guess we all just got to hang in there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that was Chris Fujigami. Thanks, brother. We had a good time. Thanks, Andrew. Take care, man.